So right now in the U.S. Uh, military, especially the U.S. Army, there's increasing interest in what's called future vertical lift, which is basically the helicopter has major limitations, can't be solved through just innovating the helicopter. You have to actually dramatically change the architecture away from the conventional single main rotor uh, helicopter. Uh, you know, a tandem's not going to do it. Tandem just increases your lift. That's not going to solve it. You have to move to either coaxial. <coughs> and I'm not going to go over why, you know, you need coaxial. I mean, uh, the symmetry of lift, you know, that we, we get that, all right? Um, then there's, of course, proponents of the tilt rotor. Now, the tilt rotor uh, is the most promising, mainly because of the speed advantage. The whole point of moving this architecture is you go faster. Um, you can go about, uh, I think, 280 knots in the V280, whereas the VSB1 is much lower. I don't have a number right now, but it's not much lower, but it's significantly lower. So the V280 is going to win, win uh, the, comp the future vertical lift competition for sure. 100% certainty, I would give it if I would bet. Um, now, one of the issues with the tilt rotor uh, is the uh, downwash. It's the disc loading. It's very high disc loading um, relative to small helicopters, but actually relative to very high capacity helicopters or very heavy helicopters like the CH-53. The CH-53K actually has the same disc loading as the V-22. Uh, or it's actually, no, no, it's, no, no, excuse me. It doesn't have the same, it has the same power loading. Uh, the disc loading is higher. Uh, and the shape of the airfoil, of course, because it's a prop, basically, creates very high velocity downwash in excess of 200 miles per hour, and that's why they're actually less susceptible to uh, settling with um, vortex ring state, is because they, they, the, the velocity of the downwash is higher than what you would ever descend at. So it's actually less vulnerable to get into uh, vortex ring state than conventional helicopter. That's a separate topic. The, the shape of the of the of the of the uh, <coughs> of the prop makes them very loud, uh, and it makes them um, a very high downwash, and it makes them less efficient because generating lift, uh, you want to mat to, to do it, it, it uh, thrusts and mass and velocity, mass and velocity, uh, and so if you want to create lift, you either accelerate a small amount of air at a very high speed, i.e. a rocket engine, or you accelerate a, a large amount of air at a low speed, i.e. a helicopter. And so that when you reduce that, when you scale down, uh, you, you, you use a smaller prop. That's why this whole EV tall thing is utter lunacy, because essentially you're increasing the disc loading. If I increase the disc loading, I need more power, uh, I need bigger engine, I need, you know, why would I do that? And especially if I'm relying on low energy dense source of energy, i.e. batteries, uh, you know, I'm thinking the guys designing these EV tolls are either smoking marijuana or they're crazy. Uh, and and I, just, I just don't understand why they do that. But anyway, so we're, talk, we're talking about tilt rotors. One of the main issues with the tilt rotor is you have to tilt the entire engine. Now, engines are pretty heavy. Gearboxes are pretty heavy. That's a, that's a mechanically uh, elaborate system. Uh, and uh, if you can avoid tilting the engine, that's really good. And so that's why Bell solved that with uh, tilting the gearbox. And I've actually, I think I'm the only one who's identified how that works. Uh, and uh, and I've, I've actually, I'm going to publish a an article on that or drawing of how I think it works, make a 3D model of it, and when, well, anyway, we'll see. Uh, by doing that, they basically solve, and, and then the other thing is on the, v, on the V22, the, the wing isn't uh, symmetric, it's not level, so it's actually, you need four intermediate gearboxes because you have an interconnecting shaft, otherwise you lose an engine, you topple over. You have an intercon uh, interconnecting shaft, and if that shaft is straight, you get rid of those gearboxes. I don't know why the designers of the V22 ever went with uh, uh, wings that weren't level. Or weren't straight. Uh, then the downwash is lower on the V280 because the disc loading has been reduced. It's a lighter, uh, lighter power of disc loading, um, and the engines are. I don't know what kind of engines they, they probably will end up using. Um, the the T406, the Liberty, the Rolls Royce on the on the v, on the V22, uh, maybe or, or or a newer engine. Uh, I don't know. I know that the CH-47 is being upgraded with the T-901, but that's a separate topic. Um, and uh, I, I don't even remember. I think it uses... Actually, I don't remember what it uses. Um, 
it's I think it's a smaller, it's a lighter aircraft too than the than the V twenty two. Uh, I don't remember the exact gross weight number. Um, the, 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 the skin is all carbon fiber. The airframe is titanium because they actually originally tried all composite on the V-22, uh, and they went to hybrid composite and titanium, I believe. Um, then we have... Uh, let's see, any other... Yeah, so you want the wing to be level, so you minimize the number of inter interconnecting gear, uh, intermediate gearboxes. Uh, you want to tilt the prop and the, and the inner, and, and, and some of the gearbox, not the whole uh, engine and gearbox, because actually the reduction gearbox adds almost as much weight as the engine, because the, um, uh, the <coughs> reduction gearbox has to take the engine from like 30,000 RPM down to, what, 200 or lower for the main rotor. Uh, and, uh, oh, and yeah, the other thing is when troops are coming out of the aircraft, you have, you have the, um, the cell tilted and it's in the way. Uh, the other thing is um, it, it's a blockage. You know, the engine's down there really low and, and, and you need a bigger landing area. It could, it could be damaged. Uh, it's very low to the ground, and the exhaust, I think, melted the tarmac on an aircraft carrier. So that's an issue, obviously. Um, yeah, that's, that's about it for tilt rotors. That's about Oh, and the other thing is the, the rationale for why to go to tilt rotor over, say, you know, I can put 10 helicopters in a C-5, drop them off, whatever, fine, but they can only go 150 miles an hour. Their range is very limited uh, without aerial, aerial refueling. And, and so tilt orders are the future for defense. We're not going to be having V-22s picking up EMS patients because they are so loud and will literally crush your house if you fly over it. I mean, we're talking about tornado speed down Washington. If you fly over a small wooden house, uh, you would crush it. It'd actually be a kind of fun way to demolish homes. You could just hover a V-22 over the house and it turned into a pancake. That's not going to work. We're going to use Bell 407s, you know, EC-135s for air medical uh, you know, we're going to use tilt rotors for defense, uh, for troop, uh, you know, for strategic kind of defense where you want to take out a dictator in not Latin America, where you want to take out a dictator in the Middle East. That's that's the way to go uh, is to use tilt rotors, um, although democracy didn't work out very well in Iraq. But that's a separate topic. Leonardo has uh, begun a development of a civilian tilt rotor, which is very exciting. Now, I assume they have identified some of these issues, but they still have not used the tilting gearbox. And so I think once that intellectual property expires, because unfortunately it is patented, and it would be very difficult for, um, for a Leonardo to just rip that off, uh, I don't think they have the intellectual property. I don't think they've invented it independently. Independent invention is a clause that works. If you can prove you invented it independently, you should be able to get the patent. I don't think they have. And so Bell will own that for 20 years. Now, interestingly, I think the Chinese uh, would be able to develop it once they get the IP, which I think they will because um, the Chinese have been interested in developing tilt rotors now for a while. The quad tilt rotor, I think, is going to be developed by, by uh, AVIC. Uh, you know, not much talk about it, but definitely I think in China you're going to see a tilt rotor uh, coming around pretty soon. It's about time. Their, their rotorcraft fleet consists of a bunch of old French designs. You know, they're nice. I like the Z19 uh, and the Z9. Um, you know, the, the, the Z20 is nice, but again, it's a cloud copy of a Blackhawk. So we need to see, and it's a copy of an aircraft that the U.S. Army wants to replace. So that's not a good thing. Uh, so we need to see more tilt rotor innovation in China because that would push uh, the West, uh, you know, increasingly to, to keep up. And of course, it's doing a great job in developing it, but in civilian uses, right? We want to see tilt rotor in the civilian world not just to take out dictators. Anyway, that's all I have to say. Goodbye, and uh, very good.